Plato, the myth of Prometheus. There was a time then when the gods were alone, but the mortal genera did not exist. But when the destined time of generation came to these, the gods fashioned them within the earth by mixing earth and fire together. And such things as are mingled with these two elements. And when they were about to lead them into light, they commanded Prometheus and Epimetheus to distribute to and adorn each with those powers which were adapted to their nature. But Epimetheus requested Prometheus that he, Epimetheus, might distribute these powers. And said he, Do you attend to my distribution? And having thus persuaded him, he distributed. But in his distributing, he gave to some strength without swiftness, and adorned with swiftness the more imbecile. Some he also armed, but giving to others an unarmed nature, he devised a certain other power for their security. For those whom he had invested with a small body, he either enabled to fly away through wings, or distributed them in a subterranean habitation. But those whom he had increased in magnitude, he preserved by their bulk. And thus equalizing, he distributed other things, taking care that no genus should be deprived of the means of preservation. After then he had secured them from mutual destruction, he took care to defend them against the injuries of the air and seasons, by clothing them with thick hairs and solid skin. so that they might be sufficiently protected in the winter frosts and summer heats, and so that these very things might become appropriate and spontaneous beds to each when they went to rest. Under their feet, likewise, he partly added arms, and partly hairs and solid and bloodless skins. He also imparted to different animals different nutriment. To some, indeed, herbs from the earth, to others the fruits of trees, and to others roots. There were some, also, whom he permitted to feed on the flesh of other animals. And to some, indeed, he gave the power of generating but a few of their own species. But to those that are devoured by these, he imparted fecundity, thus extending safety to the race. However, as Epimetheus was not very wise, he ignorantly bestowed all his powers on irrational animals. But the human race still remained unadorned by him. 
Prometheus, therefore, came to him while he was doubting, and considered the distribution which he had made. And he saw that other animals were well provided for, but that man was naked, without shoes, without a bed, and unarmed. But now the fatal day was arrived, in which it was necessary that man should emerge from the earth into light. Prometheus, therefore, being dubious what safety he could find for man, stole the artificial wisdom of Vulcan and Minerva together with fire. since it was impossible that the possession of this wisdom could be useful without fire. And thus he imparted it to man. By these means, therefore, man possessed the wisdom pertaining to life. He had not, however, political wisdom, for this was with Jupiter, and Prometheus was no longer permitted to ascend to the citadel, the habitation of Jupiter, to which we may add that the gods of Jupiter were terrible. Prometheus, therefore, secretly entered into the common habitation of Minerva and Vulcan, in which the arts were exercised. And stealing the fiery art from Vulcan, and the other from Minerva, he gave them to man. And from this arises the fertility of human life. But Prometheus afterwards, as it is said through Epimetheus, was punished for his theft. Since, however, man became a partaker of a divine allotment, in the first place through this alliance with divinity, he alone of the other animals believed that there were gods and endeavoured that the altars and statues of the gods should be established. In the next place, he articulately distinguished by art, voice and names and invented houses and garments, shoes and beds, and nourishment from the earth. But men, being thus provided for in the beginning, lived dispersed. For cities were not. Hence they were destroyed by wild beasts, through being everywhere more imbecile than them. And the fabricating art was indeed a sufficient aid to them for nutriment, but was inadequate to the war with wild beasts, for they had not yet the political art of which the military is a part. They sought, therefore, to collect themselves together and to save themselves, building for this purpose cities. When, however, they were thus collected in a body, they injured each other, as not possessing the political art, so that 
again being dispersed, they were destroyed by the beasts. Jupiter, therefore, fearing for our race, lest it should entirely perish, sent Hermes and ordered him to bring shame and justice to men. That these two might be the ornaments and the bonds of cities and the conciliators of friendship. Hermes therefore asked, after what manner he should give shame and justice to men? Whether, said he, as the arts are distributed, so also shall I distribute these? For they are distributed as follows. One man who possesses the medicinal art is sufficient for many private persons. And in a similar manner, other artificers. Shall I therefore thus insert shame and justice in men? Or shall I distribute them to all? To all, said Jupiter, and let all be partakers of them. For cities will not subsist if a few only participate of these, as of the other arts. Publish also this law in my name, that he who is incapable of partaking of shame and justice shall be punished as the pest of the city.